Hello YouTube, welcome back to Bison Workshop, I'm Bob, and we're doing yet a second video today, I guess I'm on a roll now, um, just got finished putting the uh, ring and pinion in my truck, and now I'm going to go ahead and try to tackle this drive shaft, and I figured it up, I need to add one inch. And the reason I have to do one inch, I believe it's in there far enough that it shouldn't be a problem. But, all the plastic coating is wore off of the teeth on the uh, splines on this drive shaft. So, it actually fits looser than it would if it had the plastic coating. Uh, this one had that blue plastic coating on it. And, uh, it's, it's off. None of it's on there anymore. Uh, the last two pieces fell off of it when I was cleaning it the last time. And uh, so it really only needs an inch. So I'm going to go to a junkyard and see if I can't find one that's an, an inch and a half, inch to inch and a half, no more than two inches. Uh, at a junkyard, because I really am not, I, I have no faith in my welding. Yeah, one inch is pretty much the max I want to go. So, a guy in Oregon sent me this yoke. And we're going to see if we can't make one, but I'm still going to go to the junkyard and get one. If I can't find one, at least I'm getting a plan ready, prepared, so that I have to do a worst case scenario. Um, I would like to keep the oiler, and I got a mosquito or something flying around in my face. And I just took it over to the bandsaw and cut it off. Uh, I actually wanted to cut here and then turn this down, that would have gave me more of that wider shank. But, I went ahead and opted to do it this way. So, you can see how thick mine is. That's how thick mine is. This one's only that thick. It's really thin. So, we want to utilize this heavy part for welding. So, I'm probably going to end up getting into this and I didn't really want to because I still have to chamfer this to a 45 so that I can weld it. And basically, that's what I'm going to do with this one. Is, if I can't find one that I need, this is just as thick as this. So if I take this cap off, and I don't know if I can ever get that cap off, um, take that out first. And we'll find out. I'm hoping it just unscrews, because it looks like it's got threads. If this one's like that one. See, it looks like it's got threads. I don't know if they're just grooves that are evenly spaced. Because you can't tell if there's a slant on it to see if it's threads. So I might put that under the magnifying glass. I do believe it is threads. So, what I figured to do was take this and screw it off. And it's going to look just like this. But bigger. So... I'm probably going to have to return this part up here. But I'm not going to use threads. I'm just going to use little grooves evenly spaced. Because this is rubber and it's actually pressed on there, I believe. Uh, it's got a rubber thing in it that, that it just presses on. So I believe that has to be pressed off. So we're going to see about pressing that off of there and... 
hope we don't destroy it. But when I do get that off, I'm going to cut that right where the thread, or where the, uh, this year starts getting to this size. And that'll be the same size as this. And then I'll 45 this, and then I'll 45 this. And then we will put, cut this to length, which is going to be about right there. And that will give us our inch more. So this piece would have to go on the splines first, then, then this would have to go on the splines and then push them together and then spot weld them right where they are on the shaft. Because what you want to do is get it situated there. So let's say this one here is going to be married to that one. We'll put that one on. And I can see it needs cleaned. Yeah, it needs clean. <laughs> but anyway, we'll put that all the way up on there. And just mimic this. Going in there. But you want this to go up far enough that you know that it's going to be square. Because you want your weld to be as close to the middle of where both of these are going to ride together. That way, the splines are lined up on both of them. You're not going to have as much stress on your weld. So, let's say, let's say I cut it off there. And then I welded it. And put this on. The stress is always going to be on the weld. Because this spline has never been broken. So it has no choice but to take the path of least resistance. So that would be your weld. And considering the fact that I can't weld for shit, <laughs> that makes a big challenge. So I'll cut that off right there, 45 it. This one will be 45. Then we'll stick that together. Of course, I'll have this cut down and have this slid down further, so this will go in this a little bit further. So I think this is the best way to the best route. So so basically, it's going to be. Look at that. I drew that right at one inch. Am I good or what? I got a good eye when it comes to measurements. Anyway, I just got, I'm just shitty with numbers. <laughs> and believe it or not, math was my favorite subject in school. So now we're going to cut this down. But, we got to think this through. What all do we have to do to this? Uh... Because you don't want to get rid of material if you need that material to hold it. So I think what we're going to try to do, let's see, we got a 45 it, and I think I'm just going to leave that the way it is. I don't know if I should do a little, maybe a five degree angle in there just so that when it, this all slides up in there, it doesn't hit a burr or something, I don't know. I guess after, eventually it would just wear itself, so I guess we really wouldn't have to do any angle in there. I hate that I'm going to be getting into my oiler, or grease fitting, because you need a pretty, pretty decent V
we might get a, we might be able to get past that so we're going to go ahead and uh, 45 that corner right there right now all right guys we got it cut down and we're just going to face this side here off and that thing's getting stiff for some reason I'm going to have to find out what's going on that thing's getting stiff on me Alright, so so far we've cut this off, we've cut this off, and we've cut them off in a way that this one here, yeah, we can make it a short one. <laughs> Alright, but anyway, this is the piece we want. So, basically what I'm going to do, if it comes to this, I'm going to take this one, and first of all, we're going to clean all the stuff out of it because we don't want that in our oil or grease. All them shavings. This is cast. Alright, so that will go on there just like so. find the best best fit. That one's got a hard spot somewhere there, probably because it's never rode there. But anyway, so there we have that. Then we gotta get this off. Alright guys. We got our piece made. And I'm thinking that that there will press right on there. No problem. I believe it's going to work just fine. So I'm still going to be able to use this. Alright, so now I've got this piece made. I've turned it on the lathe that you've just seen. Now we're going to go all the way up as far as that thing will go. Now this one here. I had to shore this thing up in the bandsaw as close as I can get it. Now it's not perfect. I cannot chuck that up in the lathe. Uh, there's just no way to do it. Uh, I'd have to use the forge all and I'm going to tell you what, I'll be here till next week getting that thing zeroed in. It, it ain't going to happen. 
So, I can compensate for that. A little bit of a thing. And it's not that far off either. I can tell you that. If I can find the magnifying glass, I'll be able to tell you how far I, off I am. Yeah, I'm off by very freaking little. I can tell you that. Yeah, that thing's tight. Let's see. It's tight right here, but not right here. So it's just a hair off. But, I'm not going to try to butt them together. I'm just going to let them relax on the shaft, just the way they are, and get the tightest joint that I can get on one side. And then, once I've welded it, I sure would like to turn that though. That would make a better mate. Man, that thing's so close. Maybe I can turn it and see if there's a better, better fit. I got. I believe we got a better fit that time. Yeah, that thing's pretty close. I mean, it's so close. I'm not gonna worry about it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to spot weld that in several places. So what I'll do, I'll spot weld two and two, or one and two, and then I'll spin it in the vise and do the other two. And then we'll just start working our way around it and cooling it down as we do it.
Well, here we have it. My extended yoke. You can see, you can't hardly tell it was even done. From here up is off of that one. So, there's going to be teeth coming clear up to here. So it's always going to ride on teeth. So there's never going to be any stress on the weld. So we was able to use my cap. And there we have it. I was able to use my grease fitting where I wanted to. This year is not used. So, there we have it. Now I just got to put it in tomorrow and go from there. Hope it doesn't vibrate from being out of balance. I don't know if it's out of balance or not. But we'll find out. So there you have it. Bison's way of saving a buck. <laughs> uh, I was not paying no 160 bucks to have a drive shaft made. That guy fell and bumped his head. But, you know, I just started off with a yoke that uh, John sent me. Thank you very much, John, for that. And uh, that's all that's left. That piece and that piece. Might be able to put them two pieces together. But it's broke. This is scrap. <laughs> but that I'll keep. Never know when I might need that. So don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. And uh, you guys have a good one. Later.